Hello and welcome to Shows to Astonish. I am your host, the Fat Mantis, and today we're going over the mythological symbology found both pagan and Christian found within Raised by Wolves, only on HBO Max. This video is made as of episode seven, so if you're in some sort of futurescape where you've seen episode eight or beyond, please forgive me for not being up to date. And if I've missed anything, please let me know in the comments. Now we're gonna start with what's in a name. In this show, not only do characters have multiple names or the same names as other characters, as if it's not confusing enough, but they all seem to have hidden meanings. And we're gonna start with our mother hen of mother. Now obviously, there's no hidden meaning in the name mother. Her original designation as a necro necromancer was Lamia. That's correct. Now, Lamia can be found back in Greek mythology. That was a woman who had an affair with Zeus himself, a long-term affair. When Hera discovered this, she transformed Lamia into a child-eating monster who would be fated to devour her own children. She was also cursed with restlessness. She would not be able to sleep at night and it would make her increasingly agitated. Zeus, discovering this, take pity on her. He doesn't reverse all the spells. All he does is he grants Lamia the power to remove her own eyes so she could have a few moments each day of actual peace. The character would actually grow to be a boogeyman that parents would threaten their kids with. You better do your chores or Lamia's gonna get you at night, kids. Like some sort of proto fairy tale villain. She would also go on to become, mutate into a vampiric type succubus character. That Lamia was believed to be a spirit that would go around to young men who are trying to you know, be deflowered, if you, if you get what I'm talking about. And she would take them, but after they act, would devour them, first drinking their blood and eating them up. She clearly represents some sort of paganess, as the children and father and that whole little group represents early pagans, and, while the, and the things that Christians would do to early pagans. And she's also reminiscent of another pagan goddess, Kali from India, one of the most popular ones. She is known as the Black One, the Great Devourer, and the Goddess of Destruction. She was a great warrior goddess that once she started a killing rampage, she would not stop and she would devour her enemies. Moving on, we've got our boy Caleb or Marcus or whatever he wants to be known as. Now it's interesting that his name is Caleb. Now going back to the Bible, it can be found in the book of Numbers where he was both a one of the leader of the tribes, also was one of Moses' 12 spies. They sent spies into the land of the Canaanites to see if they could transfer it or possibly attack and defeat them. He goes deeper than any other spy, even living amongst them for a short time. When he returns, all the other spies do not believe that they can go any further in this quest. They do not believe they can take on the Canaanites. However, Caleb, having lived amongst them and understanding what they are all about, knowing his enemy full well, had to convince the people of Israel to fight and defeat the Canaanites, eventually leading a path to the Holy Land. Now his character seems to connect very well to the very story of the Caleb we're watching on TV. Which brings me to his wife, Sue, whose original name was Mary. It's interesting that the two atheists had very biblical names. Now, if he is very similar to his character, what Marys do we know? Now, we know there are two Marys. Now, there was the mother of Jesus, and there was Jesus's, I like to use the word boo, was also named Mary. This is why I have my money firmly on Paul as the chosen one or Messiah of the storyline. His mother's real name, I, I know it's an adopted mother, is Mary, the mother of God. I think it's pretty clear that it is indicating that Paul is special if the show isn't already indicating that he's very special. Moving on, I'm just gonna hit this one up and this is the most simplest of one. Old French Campion is the champion. However, it's, let's look at his last name. In, and Old Dutch, Sturges means the son of Thor. That's correct. He is the son of Thor, meaning that he is divine. He is of godly presence. And Campion Sturges, as we all know, is the creator of both human life and android life as he created, or probably is responsible, for the technology that allowed a mother to nurse 12 fetuses, but also the technology to reconfigure both mother and father to be actual parent figures to the children. He is the giver of life. Which brings us to the book of Enoch, which is one of my favorite books found in Deuterkanon. Deuterkanon are books from the early Hebrew Bible that were left out of the final compiled book 
uh, known as the Bible, for, in the, from the Council of Nicaea in the early days of the formation of the Catholic Church. Now this particular book was left out because it actually showed images of angels rebelling against God's word and they, they didn't want this idea to be perpetuated. But one of the ways these angels rebelled is the, it was described as the sons of God took a liking to the daughters of man and would have them and they would procreate. I mean, give me a break. Why would a woman who has a choice between an angel who wants to get with her or, you know, some hunter-gatherer get with the hunter-gatherer? I mean, give me a break, bro. <laughs> and they would have so basically super children, you know, hybrid children known as the Nephilim. Now, in understanding what the Nephilim is, people don't understand if they're referring to demigods or if they're referring to a species or entity we've never seen in our lives, or if they ended up populating the world and we are them. They're, that theory is very pre prevalent. But I will say the concept of hybr hybrids is obviously there. As we all know, the androids are kind of like superhumans. However, it, it's clear that the 12 children that originally came here, particularly Campion and Tally, because they're also immune to radiation, seems to be hybrids. They're not full humans. After all, they can actually gain nourishment from mother's body, which means she also has to be have some sort of special components to allow that to do that. Furthermore, in the Book of Enoch, the, the angels that engaged in creating these hybrids would be punished by having the gates of heaven closed in their door, and they would be forced to live amongst the air, the land, almost like a prison, almost like a purgatory-like state. And, however, what reminds you more than purgatory than Kepler-22b? That's right. Is it possible that these people are living in some sort of dark prison? And finally, that brings us to the Messiah. Now the question of who the chosen one or who the Messiah is, is a constant reoccurring theme within this show. It actually almost never stops every episode. They get deeper and deeper and there's always a new candidate each episode. Now I want to pitch one that will kind of, is kind of rocky, you know, it's an early idea, but as we all know, science fiction is always trying to pitch an idea, an oldie but a goodie in a new form. Like, like let's face it, in Star Trek, the Borg aren't zombies. But well, we all know they're space zombies. Well, in this case, let's talk about what a ghost is. It would appear that the virus known as Campion Sturges, stuck in the computer that Mother seems to be interacting with, is really a science fiction equivalent of a ghost. And my idea is that because he's divine, as we discussed before, he is the son of a god. He, this is a holy ghost. And what we saw the other day, that random, weird, zero-G sex scene, is actually a thinly veiled cover-up for the Immaculate Conception. That's right, what I am pitching to you is that what we witnessed there was the Holy Spirit impregnating the mother. And that she is going to be pregnant from this interaction and she is going to give birth to the true Messiah of this situation. And that father is going to end up taking on a role like Joseph, the nice sucker who's looking out for the pregnant chick and make sure she's safe till she has her kids. I mean, bless his heart, bless, bless, bless father's heart. I love him, he's a great character. Which would indicate that at the end of that weird sex scene, all the rivers of white stuff that flows down wasn't android blood at all, it was... So that is all the time I have for Folks, what symbolism, both either pagan or Christian, did I miss? What do you guys think of my story? Is it possible that that was the Holy Ghost and she is the Virgin Mother? Please let me know in the comments. What else is going on? Please share all your theories, no matter how crackpot or insane. Until next time, keep tuning in to Voice of the Fat Mantis and please keep watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Raised by Wolves on HBO Max, it is amazing. Till next time, ciao for now.